In TLC, the last pay-per-view of 2013, John Cena and Randy Orton are going after each other. They're going to beef to unify the titles. This is something a lot of the indie fanboys wanted for CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. So a John Cena and a Randy Orton would be the antithesis since they're the both the wrestlers and the fanboys hate the most because they represent the mainstream corporate WWE. And it's very hipsterific and autistic that they wanted CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan, but the Lexman actually said that. And I actually liked the Lexman's videos so I wasn't surprised that he would say that since I know him very well. But the interesting thing is that these guys used to beef non-stop from 2007 all the way to 2010. Early 2010. Then Orton turned face and it all kind of changed from there on. But after that it seemed that they weren't in the ring together a lot. That there was always something to separate them, whether it be the the fact that Orton was face, or that he was in SmackDown, or the fact that one of them was injured, or just the fact that Cena has a world title and he was in SmackDown for a few months because of it. Still is kind of, but... There was always something that kind of kept them away for the past couple of years. But now here we are with them again. I'm actually looking forward to this match for two reasons. One, it's going to be a TLC match. And the thing with Randy Orton's wrestling style is that he likes getting on his back a lot. So I could see how with tables, ladders, and chairs, that would be kind of interesting. I mean, he has that... He has the best drop kick in the business. Like the only person I think is like kind of better would be Dolph Ziggler sometimes. But this guy, when he does a drop kick, he lands on his fucking back. He does like the best drop kick out there. Or when he does an RKO or superplex or a rope DDT, this thing is always going on his back. He's like Kelly Kelly, but fuck. This nigga just, he loves going in the back. His back must be, like, fucking torn up. Why is his shoulders fucked up? It should be his fucking back. I mean, his arm is so fucked up. He has, like, the longest arms in the fucking world because of what happened when of his match in, with Jeff Hardy. But shit, it should be his back that's all fucked up. He keeps landing on that shit, so... Hopefully he lands on some chairs, he lands on some tables, he falls on his back and lands on a ladder, or he does a superplex off the top rope while on a ladder or some shit like that. Just get on his back really hard and really extremely, extremely. That's what's cool. John Cena, on the other hand, his wrestling style, I kind of describe it as this. He wrestles like... He googled the night before how to beat that wrestler. I mean, depending on what kind of wrestler he fights, he does like the most bland moves in response to him. With a big guy, he's gonna do his DDT plus his five moves of doom. With a high flyer, he's gonna roll out of the way right in time and then execute that shit. He's an underrated wrestler in the sense that he actually does get into four-star matches every year. In fact, he had a lot in 2007. 2007 was like his year, essentially. It was his magnum opus. But shit. John Cena don't fuck around. This guy... Well, I imagine him getting in the ring with his t-shirt and his shorts I can imagine a fanny pack on him because I think he's like getting he, he does this last minute shit with every guy he wrestles where it's like did your grandma tell you already 
If you're gonna beat him, you gotta use this move. You gotta use this strategy. It's Big Show, so you gotta showcase your strength and lift him. Make sure you struggle lifting him the first couple of times. Same with Mark Henry. Or roll out of the way in time for his one move. But you gotta hulk up during this match. Remember, honey. So I can imagine that with if he's about to get punted in the TLC match, that he's gonna use that minimalist strategy or do a reversal in time or something like that. Because he's a very minimalist guy in that sense. Although he can't do a hurricane run now, so I gotta give him respects for that, I guess. Really, the big thing for me is that I'm glad that the World Heavyweight title, that shit's gonna be gone. Because that shit is starting to look like an intercontinental title belt. Hell, the intercontinental belt is looking a bit hotter than that. Because with the intercontinental belt, you had some good reigns in the past. You had niggas like Cody Rhodes holding that shit for a long time. You had Big Show who actually... That belt was kind of good for him. Although he didn't hold it for very long. We had a lot of guys. Christian had it. The Miz had it. And let's be honest, the Miz is a mid-carder. So it was a belt that knew what it was. I'm kind of pissed that it's a, essentially a purgatory belt. But at least it knows what it is. With the World Heavyweight title, you have guys like Dolph Ziggler who've held it twice. Yet they've kind of downgraded it with their shitty reigns. And Dolph Ziggler is a good wrestler, so that's really terrible. Uh, when the best guy to, who held it for the past couple of years has been Mark Henry, you know there's a problem. I mean, I'll be honest, Edge's title reigns were really awesome with the belt, but he never really holds a belt on for more than a few months. It kind of goes on a hot potato effect with him because the writers really do too much weird shit with Edge. And now he's gone, of course. So that's tragic. But that belt needs to get the fuck out. I mean, seriously. Who held a belt in WrestleMania and who left with the belt in WrestleMania? The Rock came in with the belt, and John Cena left with the belt. For the World Heavyweight title, you had Alberto Del Rio come in with the belt and leave with the belt against Jack Swagger. So, shit, that's kind of dumb. That belt has got to go. I remember when that shit was always the main event. Even though... Even when that shit was in SmackDown, that was the main event of a pay-per-view that also had the WWE belt. That was the thing. That was a hot belt. And you would think that the WWE belt would always be their top belt. No. At one point, the World Heavyweight Championship was the better one for almost half a decade. A little bit more than that sometimes because it had the history of being the big gold belt before it was the WCW belt before that it was the NWA belt it's had some history to it and even though the belt really started in 2002 it was based off that so it had that power to it it was more than just a product of an East Coast, Madison Square Garden promotion. It had history throughout the nation, even before the WWE. So that was cool, but now it's got to go. Because it's making world champions out of people that really are reducing what that means. Deflating it. And that's Gucci at all.
all in all, I gotta say that if the match sucks, then fuck. At least, at least it's a mercy killing for a very historical title, and in the end. CM Punk and Daniel Bryan are still going to execute really interesting matches on TV. For the past couple of pay-per-views, they haven't delivered. But oh well. I still like all four of those wrestlers anyway. And in the end, I'm still Team Jericho, so... Compared to him, all those niggas don't mean shit to me. This is Mr. Rocka 7, and... Sit on my chest. Alright, suck my dick. By the way, guys, I just forgot. I'm gonna do a Q&A video for this Thanksgiving, so on the comment section, give me a lot of political questions, give me a lot of freaky questions, give me a lot of wrestling questions, give me, give me any question you can give me, alright? So, fuck.